Thanks for inviting me to this conversation about hosting equitable and engaging conversations online. Uh, lots to talk about here, and I'm, I'm excited to hear what everyone else has to say, but I'm just going to give about five different things that I think about whenever I'm going to facilitate. The first thing is to establish the ground rules. Uh, I've been using Brave Spaces lately, but there are lots of other models out there, but just be really clear with the group that you're working with, what's acceptable inside of a conversation. Uh, one of the things about Brave Spaces, for instance, is that just because you want to argue with someone, it doesn't mean that person needs to discuss back with you, like allowing people out of a conversation as well as bringing them in. So establishing those ground rules, making it really clear what the social contract is, what good conversation looks like, just to, so that later on when you bring it up, people know that they were brought into a space that is as fair as you can make it, and then also um, that they're being treated fairly against a set of expectations that they understand. Um, the second thing that I've been doing in a lot of my classes now is doing in-class reading. So if I have like an hour and a half long session, I'll give the students 10 or, or participants 10 or 15 minutes to read a shared reading so that when we come to a conversation, they've had a chance to think about what they might want to talk about. And they've also had a chance to do that reading. I think when we look at equity conversations, one of the things that I think is the most important is understanding that there are people with a lot more time in their lives to be able to engage with material than others. So giving everybody at least a little bit of common ground at the beginning allows them to participate with a little bit more confidence and maybe balances the playing field a little bit between those people whose lives are maybe a little bit more hectic right now than other people's. Um, another is trying to find invitation cues. Uh, this is a hard one. It obviously works better if people's cameras are on and I understand that there are circumstances where that can't happen. But inviting people to present cues, so whether that's in the chat room, whether it's facial expressions, whether it's uh, working together in an online document that can be presented to the whole group, all of those things are different ways of allowing people the chance to give cues that are not um, about raising their hand, which is what we would do in a face-to-face -face classroom, but finding a way that works for you and your group to do cues and also allow people to have different ones. So some people are going to want to talk right away. And some people are going to want to come in later in a conversation or have just thought about it and you could tell they feel like their moment has been missed. So seeing that cue, inviting that person in, giving them a chance to share, I think is a really important part of the engagement process. Along with that, one of the things that I do use a lot are uh, facilitated slides. I've called them live slides before, but it's that way where you might use something like Google Slides or any other shared document to allow people to present their ideas on a topic without actually being the person who's saying it. So if you imagine a, a slide uh, that everybody in, in the online group is writing to at the same time, I'll do sort of a live narration of that slide so people get a chance to share without being picked out, without actually having to uh, put their name behind that thing. Maybe they're not sure about it. Maybe there are reasons why they don't want to be identified inside that class. But it gives a lot more space for participation it gives people a chance to participate in a different way and it also gives that sort of choral understanding where all the group gets to talk about the thing at the same time and then you try to facilitate your way through that conversation as much as you can and that brings me to my last point and uh, as a representing as an old white dude uh, maybe the part that's always been the hardest for me and the thing I always have to tell myself um, is that engagement is not about me it's not about the facilitator. You are a facilitator of other people's engagement. I think um, whenever we're presenting on our own material, it's really hard not to get in there and get excited and tell a story or um, contextualize it to the work that someone else is doing. And that's an important part of teaching, but balancing that between sort of doing the teaching part where you're sharing your experience with the people you're facilitating with, with understanding that it's about them coming to know and them getting to a place and finding that timing where you yourself are injecting new ideas and new pathways that help promote their conversation rather than what I have found myself doing on a number of occasions but try not to which is finding their participation as a chance for me to share what I'm doing. So I think that timing and that realizing of where engagement lives is maybe the most important part of this process. Thanks very much for the invitation. Can't wait to see what everybody else has said. Thanks.